Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Moldong. Today I'm going to do a movie review for The Fate of the Furious. Be on the lookout for a manga review of Death Note Volumes 10 to 12, which will finish the series. And in three weeks, I'll have a movie review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. You can check out my author's website at www.chrismodon.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Convent Kingdom, for $4.99. Also, for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories and a horror fantasy and realistic fiction genres check out my twitter page and author's facebook page links to all these will be provided on the, the description don't forget to subscribe share and comment to this channel if you're on youtube or follow share and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on soundcloud if you're listening to this on itunes or stitcher please rate review and share this channel so the way that this is going to work is that i'm going to do a pretty detailed recap of the event of what happens in the movie uh there will have spoilers so if you haven't seen the movie yet i mean i'm pretty much just going to spoil the whole movie here afterwards i will give my thoughts on the movie on the characters and the events uh, and whatnot so let's uh start it off with fate of the furious movie review okay so Dom Toretto and Letty are on their honeymoon in Havana and Dom is challenged to a street race by a local racer named Fernando. Dom races for Fernando's car and if he wins he wants to give it to his cousin and he wagers his own car. Uh, Dom barely wins a race but he allows Fernando to keep his car but he earns Fernando's respect and he gives uh, his cousin um, Dom gives his cousin like his own car. The next day, Dom helps a woman fix her Jeep, but the woman turns out to be cyber terror, uh, terrorist Cypher, played by um, Charlize Theron. He pretty much coerces him into working with, for her. She shows him this, it looks like an image, video, we, you don't really know, but something on a uh, cell phone, uh, on a smartphone, and uh, it pretty much forces him to work for her. So, after that, uh, then Dom and his team, uh, comprising of Letty, Roman, uh, Tej, and Ramsey, are recruited by Luke Hobbs, uh, also known as Dwayne The Rock Johnson, uh, to help him retrieve an EMP from a military outpost in Berlin. During the getaway, Dom forces Hobbs off the road and steals the device for Cypher. Hobbs is then arrested and locked up in the same uh, high security prison as Deckard Shaw. So uh, they escape and both are recruited by Frank Petty, who is Mr. Nobody, and his protege, Eric Reisner, who is who they call Little Nobody, who's played by uh, Scott Eastwood, uh, to help them find Dom and capture Cypher. So Deckard reveals that Cypher was a mastermind of previous uh, encounters with the team, like his brother Owen stealing the Nightshade device or like the theft of the God's Eye. Um, as they tried to track down Cypher and Dom, Dom and Cypher attack the base that they're in and steal the, the God's Eye. Dom then questions Cypher's motives and she reveals that she holds Dom's... Uh, ex-lover and uh, DSS agent Elena uh, Nevis um, as well as her son uh, they hold him hostage so Elena tells Don or Dom that the child was born as a result of an unintended pregnancy and that she wants him to pick the child's first name and she's given him the middle name of Marcos so Cypher sends Dom to New York City to retrieve a nuclear football held by the Russian Minister of Defense. Uh, Dom manages to evade her for a short amount of time though through a diversion involving him acting as if something's wrong with the car. Then he hides behind the hood of the car um, so camera can't really see him. And they're using the God's Eye. Um, Cypher is. And then there another camera 
also is being blocked by a delivery truck. He ends up meeting an older woman, like an old woman, uh, played by Helen Mirren, at a bar and asks for her help. Uh, Dom's old team intercepts Dom after he steals a nuclear football, but Dom escapes, and he shoots and kills Deckard in the process. Uh, Cypher hacks into all the at autonomous cars in the city and reprograms them to auto drive and just wreaks havoc throughout the city. It's actually a pretty cool visual. Letty catches up to Dom, but she's ambushed by Cypher's like right hand man, Connor Rhodes, but Dom rescues her. But in retaliation to this, because Dom didn't kill Letty, Cypher has Rhodes kill Elena in front of Dom. Dom is then sent to Russia to use the EMP to disable a nuclear submarine. There, and you know, once again, he's intercepted by his old team, uh, but they're provided with modi uh, modified vehicles by uh, Mr. Nobody. Meanwhile, Deckard, who apparently faked his own death and was like extracted by uh, Tego, Leo, and Rico Santos, who are former members of Dom's team. Infiltrates Cypher's plan uh, or plane uh, to rescue Dom's son with the help of his brother Owen Shaw. It's revealed that the old woman that Dom met at the bar was Deckard and, and Owen's mother, Magdalena, uh, Magdalene Shaw, who pretty much told Deckard to help Owen escape from uh, prison and help Dom. Uh, it's also revealed that the person driving the delivery truck that blocked uh, the camera was Fernando, who he earned the respect from at the beginning of the movie. So, um, once, Don, uh, once Deckard reports that the child is safe, because him and his brother are going there and just pretty much just do a rescue mission, Dom then turns on Cypher and kills Rhodes and then rejoins the team. Cypher then launches an infrared homing missile at Dom, but he kind of, like maneuvers around and whatnot, to, and eventually makes a missile hit the submarine instead. Uh, in the explosion that's coming towards Dom, the team quickly forms like this vehicular blockade around Dom and it just shields him from that explosion. Um, so Decker then reaches the front of the plane and confronts Cypher, but she makes her escape and parachutes out of the plane. So, Nobody and Little Nobody visit Dom and his team in New York City on a rooftop to report that Cypher is still at large. Hobbs is offered his DSS job back, but he declines because he wants to spend more time with his daughter. Decker then arrives to return Dom's son. Um, it seems like they kind of patched things up, you know, because they were arch enemies before. Uh, it seems like Deckard kind of pats things up with Hobbs, who's, man, they, they wanted to kill each other, too. So, at the end of the movie, Dom decides to name his son Brian, after his friend and brother-in-law, Brian O'Connor, who, who was played by Paul, the late Paul Walker, and at the very end, they celebrate. So, some thoughts. Um, the big thing that happened in this movie, obviously, is that Dom turned bad. He, he turned on his... Uh, teammates and they had to go so far as to recruit Deckard Shaw and um, to work with like Hobbs and the rest of the team to try and get Dom back. Uh, it's pretty interesting. He, he was pretty much tormented throughout the whole time because his big his thing is family. You know, he's always talking about family and and whatnot and. Uh, you know, he's, he turned bad for his direct family, his son, but, you know, in turn, turned against his, you know, what he considers his team, but it, which is his family as well. And that, that was just a really big theme of this whole movie, that, this idea of family. Cypher is a little more, I guess pragmatic you know she doesn't care about those type of things she's just more like I want to put people in check I don't need things like family and whatnot and you know she has the power and ability to 
make things happen. Cypher is pretty interesting. Uh, they kind of did what I guess the Bond movies did recently with Skyfall, and that's they used the villain in order to kind of justify and connect the events of the previous movies. Bond did the same in Skyfall with the organization. Was you know like all like previous Bond. Bond villains apparently were a part of the evil organization and in this movie apparently like Owen Shaw um, you know the guys trying to steal the God's eye were working under Cypher so it all kind of connects and um, yeah I, I'm fine with that I, I, I'm fine with that it's you know it's not like it doesn't make sense or anything like that um, you know, I like that they connect past Fast and the Furious movies and not make, uh, each movie its own thing. Like, everything's kind of connected in some way, shape, or form. So, yeah, I, I tend to like that. They did that with, um, Fast and the Furious 6 at the very end. They, they connected it with Tokyo Drift. Uh, they brought back Letty, who we thought died in Fast and, in number four, right? If I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I actually really like that they do that. Uh, they also tied in Elena in here uh, as obviously having a, a child with Dom. She was convenient, in a sense, she's kind of conveniently killed off, if, if you think about it, because now it's, at the beginning of the movie, Letty's asking, like, hey, how come we're not talking about having a kid, and now Dom has a kid with Elena, so I guess she's kind of got, uh, you know, she's now got Letty to be, uh, what is that, would that be a baby mama, or, <laughs> but, you know, Dom and Letty can now kind of take care of this kid. I mean, if you're actually really thinking about it, though, I mean, the reason why they're not having a kid is because these guys are criminals. <laughs> you know, they, they've been wanted. Trouble has a way of finding them and almost killing them. And, you know, they can't seem to even stay at one place for a very long period of time. So, you know, there, there are good, you know, there are reasons why these two don't have, Dom and Letty don't have a kid, you know, <laughs> that don't necessarily need to be said. Um, I like also, speaking of like connecting to uh, past Fast and Furious, I'm glad that they just mentioned Brian, because when Dom turned bad, Roman kind of suggests, hey, maybe we should get Brian, and then it's like, and then Letty's like, no, no, we can't. We, we promised we wouldn't do that. And I just kind of like that, they, that like, attention to detail. Where it's like, okay, hey, he's still around. You know what I mean? And he was, he, you know, to the point where you're like, he was an option. So I, I'm just glad that they had that, like, little bit of, like, attention to detail. You know? And, and once again, it, it's, it goes in line with what happened in the series before, you know, it's like, hey, we're not, you know, he's not with the team anymore, you know, he's got his own life with his kids and whatnot, you know, we can't have him involved, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, to kind of replace Brian, Paul Walker's character, or the late Paul Walker's character was um, Eric Reisner, or Little Nobody, he kind of played the straight man, the something of the voice of reason, the guy that followed the rules. Um, yeah, he was played by Scott Eastwood. I, I thought he did the job well. You know, he, he was that, like a rookie. He kind of approached things as like the way he approached Hobbs and talked about his daughter. He kind of approached things like a rookie, like he's really green. He's always, he was following the book the whole time until like, Mid, near the mid to end of the movie where he's like, okay, hey, yeah, th there are no rules, you know, <laughs> we, we gotta, you know, just 
take care of business. So I like the addition of his character. He, he in a sense, he, he replaced Paul Walker's character. So you know, um, that was fine. Letty, uh, you know, obviously plays a big role in this too. Um, try, you know, the one that's closest to Dom, trying to get him back. Um, obviously, she knows that, like, the Dom that is, that turned against him, that went rogue, is, is like the old Dom. Um, you know, she, she always, uh, plays her, her part well, you know, just the tough girlfriend, she can, she can drive, she can fight, and whatnot. Roman still, once again, uh, played... The comic relief, um, and the, you know that's pretty much what he's been throughout the whole movie. I'll, I'll say this though: he, he he like he doesn't appear to have any special ability uh, or like special talent per se, except for being kind of obnoxious. But if he actually did have one, that like he surpasses everyone else he has incredible luck it seems like um i don't know if they meant to have this character to be like that but it just if you watch the movies he just seems appears to be incredibly lucky uh dwayne the rock johnson was back brought back um to play luke hobbs it's uh rumored that hobbs is gonna have his own spinoff hobbs seems to be getting just more and more cartoonish as like the you know since he was like introduced um like they shoot rubber bullets at the guy and he doesn't even get he just barely gets phased i mean it, it's kind of ridiculous and it, it goes back to like you know this kind of happened and geez i can't, forgot what fast and furious but where they just had these absolutely inhuman super like incredible things happen um that's starting to become a thing with the franchise where it's like okay they're gonna jump from you know from using you know driving a car go from one skyscraper to another or like i'm gonna jump from the top of this freeway to this other freeway and catch letty in midair and land on the car i mean it, it, they, they just have these, like, oh my god moments, you know, like, come, or these, like, come on moments. Um, Luke Hobbs, as, as he's progressed throughout the series, is kind of like one big, like, come on moment. It, it's just, you shoot him with rubber bullets and he's not phased. He kicks a torpedo at a, yeah, at, um, was it a truck or a van? I forgot, in the snow. He kicks a torpedo away. <laughs> he's, like, he's like the Hulk, you know, pretty much, and, and it's it's just downright cartoony at this point. How like you know Hulk this guy is at this uh, at this juncture. Um, Deckard Shaw, uh, played by Jason Salem, pay, played a uh, pretty big role here too. It was kind of cool just because we got to see another side of the character. Um, actually quite a bit of sides, you know, uh, he had some really good moments, actually. I liked his interaction at Hobbs. They were just kind of like insulting each other throughout the whole movie. Um, seems like they kind of reached an understanding because Hobbs was put in prison and deemed this like traitor. And Deckard kind of just hints at like, oh, you know, now you know how it feels. Like, as if that's what happened to Deckard Sean. That's why he's, he was in the situation that he's in. And it seems like they kind of reached an understanding at that point. Um, his interactions with Dom's kid was really funny. He got to see a different side of the guy. He was not so much a villain. Um, he has a mother. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the other thing too. Um, it was cool actually seeing him work with Owen Shaw. I, I thought that was a really nice touch. I, if I'm not mistaken, they're supposed to bring back, um, 
from Tokyo Drift. I, I'm was that Lucas Black is his name? I think they were supposed to bring him back, but like scheduling conflicts made it so that that couldn't happen. Um, the other thing that's very curious about Deku Cha though is, is the end. Like, is he now a part of the quote unquote family now? Because he's sitting on the table, you know. And he helped Dom save his son. So is he one of the good guys? And if he is one of the family now, I mean, they're indestructible. I mean, you, you have Deckard Shaw, Dom, who is pretty much indestructible. And of course, you now have, also have Hobbs, who is definitely indestructible. So you have this very powerful team. I only mentioned that because Cypher did indeed escape, which opens up a Fast and the Furious 9, because now you have the built-in villain returning, because, um, you know, she, she's, as nobody said at the end of the movie, she's still at large, she's still around, so, and knowing how this franchise works, um, as long as it makes money, they're going to make more movies, and people eat it up. You know, um, there, there are some pretty cool scenes in this movie. Uh, the hijacking of the autonomous cars. Cars falling from the top, from like buildings. Um, there's the prison scene where like all these prisoners escape. And Hobbs is just going all Hulk. Deckard's going all parkour. Uh, so that was pretty cool. The submarine scene was so unbelievable. <laughs> but once again, it's like you have to like almost turn off your brain and accept a different type of logic when watching these type of movies. Because if you start questioning everything, then you know you're not gonna like the movie. That scene in New York, in general, is just pretty cool as well. And, yeah, you know, just going back to the movie itself and the franchise itself, it's like, what is it about this franchise that is just making money? People like this franchise. I mean, it's been around for, like, I don't know, what, 15 years or so? The first three, you know, there's the first three, and then it just kind of went away, and then it came back with the fourth in a big way, and from there... It just went up and up. So, like, what is this? The magic formula that they have? They have the. Well, they they do keep reinventing themselves, you know. Whereas, like, the first three are more about racing. Number two, you know, four, five, and six, and seven as well, if I'm not mistaken, are more like heist movies. A lot of, uh, and then like number eight, it's not much of a heist, it's more like a spy type movie. So, um, it is a, it, yeah, it is a franchise that reinvents itself. Yeah, they always have, a th you know, the gun, uh, the cars, the really cool cars, and the way they use cars is a big thing. You know, you have a combination of like hot women, awesome cars, guns, violence, everyone's like an alpha male, <laughs> um, it just has this really good, you know, like, it just kind of works, uh, and, and I expect that it's going to do really well in the theaters, I expect that they're going to have a sequel, a number 9, and, and uh, you know what, if this franchise keeps going, they can have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and, and so on until it stops making money, um, that's how this franchise works, it's... Hard to explain because, you know, it's we've seen action movies, but there's just something about the Fast and the Furious franchise that kind of stands out from other action franchises as well. So, that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to this movie review. Be on the lookout for my manga review for Death Note Volumes 10 to 12, which will finish the series. And in three weeks, I'll have a movie review for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Thank you.
and until next time.